We showed off the Sharp MZ1500 uh, before, so check that video if you haven't. It should be displayed somewhere or in somewhere, depending on what you're watching on. Doesn't always show them. But anyway, we showed it before. We didn't really have much software to do, mostly the discs that came with it, which were fairly dull. <laughs> but we've now got a device that we can uh, use to load up far more games for it, a nice uh, solid state device. Uh, so now we're going to take a look at that and see if we can get it working. And uh, we've got to do some changes to the machine. So we'll be opening up, open up the shop as well to do some changes. Uh, and hopefully we can get it working properly and get some stuff loaded up. Right, and this is the other option. This is the Unicard 3B. And um, this gives us lots of options for this uh, for this machine. It's available also for the, uh, the MZ 800 and 700, and therein kind of lies the problem. Uh, but let's, talk, let's look at the actual card itself for a bit. Um, so we have this, which is a VJ output, also very useful, the SD card slot course. Um, and serial, uh, Fnet, and I think that's a PS2 keyboard and sound output as well. But regardless, the uh, the main things <laughs> that we're interested in is this SD card and uh, the VGA output. So, as I said, it gives us a lot of options. Um, and if we were running the 700 and 800, which do not have integrated <laughs> quick disk drive, this would be great. We're going to do all these features. But the problem is, because that drive is in there, it takes over some uh, a memory location that this requires to load uh, simulated quick disks. So we need to fix that. Now they have thought about that, and so there is a replacement ROM that we can put inside here, and that's uh, that's this. Uh, well, with this bit here, not the programmer itself. So yeah, so this ROM, which I've written onto this device, that will. Move. I think it moves the the port location of the the quick disk drive, so that the uh, the actual Uni card can take over it. Either way, it should allow us to use quick disk images using this card to load up on this machine. So, well, first of all, let's reinstall this card. I literally just took it out to to show you. <laughs> Otherwise, that concern that you will end up breaking the thing. So we have this huge slot at the back, it's normally covered by a blanking plate, and there's little plastic uh, guides there to move it in. And then a good push will, there we go, lock that into place. So there we go. This is fairly hefty build by the way, this this bank, uh, blanking plate, backing plate, plate I guess, if I can get that word out. It's pretty thick metal, so uh, I'm quite impressed with that. Anyway. Oh, I should say, the, 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 this works perfectly as well. As, as well. VGA output is really nice, and um, what I could load on this, uh, like the other types of uh, discs and stuff, they, they loaded really well, so perfectly fine. Now, what we need to do is we need... Oh, we just spin this around. Actually, I don't know why I'm spinning that around. The screws are at the back. Obviously, that's where screws generally are, on the bottom. So we need to take this apart. This comes apart in a really interesting way. So I'm gonna show it because I think it's kind of cool. Let me get a screwdriver. And of course there was a reason why I spin that around. That's because the first screws are in fact on the bottom. <laughs> uh, we'll half lift it up because we don't wanna crush the quick disc. So there's three screws here. But this still isn't open yet, there's still some more screws. And these are underneath these two compartments. So, let's take this one off first. So the expansion tray. Which also has three screws. And then this, just kind of, eventually, when we get it, uh, Correct. It will just, there we go, just slide off. And then there's some cables we have to pull off. And this one, there we go. And then that whole section just comes away, which I think is kind of cool. And, and there's one more screw there, but we're still not done yet. 
onto the quick disc, there's another one. Again, that will just kind of... Ooh, come on, there we go, lift up. And it has this one, just one cable, which will just pull off, and then the whole quick disc unit comes off. <laughs> I think that's really cool. So that leaves us this and these two screws inside. And then with all those gone, We can oops, throw those everywhere, but very gently remove the plastic case. So now we have full access to the internals. So here we are. I'm pretty sure this is the room I need to replace because of the size. Hopefully I'm correct. So we have our chip puller. Oops. A bit, there we go. <laughs> want to go as straight up as possible. There we go. Yep. Legs are gonna legs are pretty straight anyway, so that's good. And we have the little notch there you can probably just about see. That tells us which way we have to insert the chip. <laughs> and yeah we have our corresponding notch there. This is the legs on this are a bit splayed out so we're just gonna bend them in a little bit. I generally just kind of rock it on the table to bend them in. Right. This is quite a uh, stiff chip hold by the feel of it so hopefully this will go in first time. I'm gonna make sure all the legs are in place. They seem to be Actually, that was a lot better than I thought it was. Verify again that the notches match up. And they do. So it's the same as this one next to it as well, so that's fine. Right. So now we need to reassemble it and test it out. Few moments later. I'll be honest, this is the second time we're turning this on. <laughs> because it turns out that the uh, my recording device that records game footage doesn't like VGA input. So I have reverted to the of the far worse quality composite, um, and maybe we'll take some screenshots, of the, some screen video of the the VGA is vastly better anyway. Um, but we'll do some. We'll record the game footage using composite for now. Uh, yeah. Anyway, this is the same time done on, so you know I won't say what happened. Although I think you probably guess. <laughs> Right, I haven't actually tried loading anything yet, so I don't know if that bit works, but I'm guessing this is a good sign, because this means that at least the machine boots up. Uh, right, so the devices that didn't work are these MZQ ones. Oh, Flappy, yeah, let's let's look, try loading Flappy then. Now, normally what would happen is, if with the other ROM in, it just wouldn't load. We'd click on this and it would just kind of drop down into the, um, the DOS-style environment, basic environment. So let's try... Uh, so look at the cutest files from uh, yes. Right, use the key break. Right, so I think now if we reboot, it will boot from that disk. Yes. It did not. <laughs> um, hmm. Ah! There we go. Right. <laughs> After much messing around. Uh, oh, it needs this B. How do I do that? Hey! <laughs> right. Whoa. Okay. 
Flappy's a really cool puzzle game, by the way. It, it starts out easy, but it gets quite hard. Uh, we need to get this blue thing down to the bottom. Uh, obviously, the first level, quite easy. There we go. <laughs> Alright, well that works. Uh, cool, it worked. <laughs> Let's get some footage of the actual thing running through uh, the VGA, because we're still using the camera unfortunately. But the picture is amazingly better, so keep in your head this picture. Maybe I even splice one. Who knows? Maybe I'll get fancy like that. Anyway, yes, that is vastly, vastly... <laughs> Oh, we should turn the volume down. But that is vastly uh, better quality than the composite. Well, you know, we can do more stuff on this machine now. Now we can load this stuff up. And maybe we'll do a stream as well. That would be kind of cool. Um, I suspect the VGA will work through the device I use for streaming because that um, seems to load up a lot more than my actual capture device does. I've had to use it to capture stuff before. Could have used it now, probably, but <laughs> never mind. So, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's wrap up. Right, there we go. <laughs> it worked. That Unicard is a really, really good device, and we will get into it in a bit more detail. We'll find some more software for the Sharp G, because it's a fascinating machine as well. And now we have that, we can load up whatever we want, pretty much. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit like. If you really like the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't like the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. And don't forget you can have a bell icon to get told of future videos, including future Sharp MZ1500 videos. Uh, and yeah, joining our group to get early videos and uh, exclusive videos as well or Patreon for the same thing. And we have a new channel now as well called uh, Gaming Infused where we'll put all of our gaming only content. So uh, we did a bit with the hardware here, so that's why it's on this channel. If we'd just been playing Flappy, it would have been on this second channel. So yeah, we're doing that for now. <laughs> right. See you next time. The present is horrible. The future looks bleak. Remember our childhood to get us through the week. We're getting re-enthused. We all know that our pasts were great Escaping the things that today we hate Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused